Hi, welcome back. We are in the second part of the Canterville Ghost analysis of its chapter. I will be assuming that you have watched the full video, part one of the Canterville Ghost, where I have uh, talked about the Canterville Ghost in detail regarding the introduction, character analysis, and the background of the novella the historical background and chapter one i will not be talking about all those in part two so here what i'm going to do is i will be going through chapter chapter two chapter three and chapter four so three chapters and in the next part part three i will be discussing on another three chapters that is uh they are chapter f uh, chapter five chapter six and chapter seven so stay tuned in this part uh, this second part i will be uh, going through chapter two chapter three and chapter four in detail so we are slowly getting this idea about the the ghost as we go on and we are slowly encountering who this ghost really is so in chapter two we will come to know who this ghost really is and also uh, this ghost has the you know he has this trait to even be insulted and in chapter two we will come across the the first appearance of the ghost despite warnings from so many people including lord canterville mr otis was adamant he really wanted to buy canterville chase and he was not really bothered about the ghost and the house which has been haunted and is still haunted he was a really practical man along with his family from America and they were not really bothered about ghost or a place being haunted they've already purchased Canterville Chase from Lord Canterville and now they have taken possession of Canterville Chase including its resident there's someone there so they've taken that that person as well and who is that he is none other than the ghost so they they are inside the chase now the next morning when they came down to have breakfast they found another terrible blood stain remember in chapter one um washington otis humorously talking about this detergent brand kind of like this um pinkerton detergent and that stuff and the moment washington saw it he was not impressed with paragon detergent so again this whole uh, link or attachment with uh, consumerism and brand consciousness it must be the work of detergent paragon detergent because i've tried i tried a lot yesterday and it, gone now just look at it it is back it must be the fault of um, paragon detergent i have to write a complaint or something so again direct link so brand conscious this whole uh, idea of consumerism let's keep that in mind so again he robbed the stain for the second time however the next day the day after that the blood stain appeared again the first appearance of the ghost is seen in chapter 2 it was at 11 o'clock everyone had retired after some time mr otis was awakened by a curious noise from the corridor outside the room and when he sort of uh kept listening it was like the sound of the clanking of metal 
and seemed to be coming nearer, closer. So at once he got up, struck a match and looked at the time. When he looked at it, it was exactly one o'clock. He was quiet and calm, nothing. For example, if we are in the place of um, Mr. Otis at the dead of night, we might be uh, scared, we might panic. Remember, it is midnight, one o'clock. However, this man was so calm, so quiet, and nothing, nothing, nothing felt his pulse and was not at all feverish. When he listened again, the noise was still continuing. So what did he do? He put on his slippers, took a small oblong, um, took a small bottle. The name of the bottle is not mentioned now. He took this a small bottle out of his dressing case and opened the door. And as soon as he opened the door was the first appearance of the ghost what did he see right in front of him he saw in the wan moonlight an old man of terrible aspect terrible physical appearance his eyes were as red burning coals long uh, gray hair fell over his shoulders you can see uh, just imagine how you'll feel at night if you see a figure like that at the dead of night so his long gray hair fell over his shoulders in matted quail dirty and all uh, quilled up his garments which were of antique God were swelled and racked, and from his wrist and ankles hung heavy manacles and rusty metal shackles for the leg. So from his left leg to his right leg was these metal shackles. Again, what we need to uh, remember is Mr. Otis is as calm as he is right from the beginning. And he is still a very calm man. And what did he do? He replied to the ghost, My dear sir, I really must insist on your oiling those chains. And I've brought you for that purpose a small bottle of Tammany Rising Sun Lubricator. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can imagine. Imagine this, you are in the position of the ghost. So the ghost is trying to scare you. However, if you approach him in this manner, Yo, what's up? You're making so much noise. Apply this well. And that way it'll make less noise. Imagine how shocked the ghost will be. Here, so instead of like this, those typical horror movies or films or gothic stories, here is a man who is as calm as as a, a gentleman, not at all scared and directly in conversation with the ghost. Sir, why don't you apply this lubricator? Tammany Rising Sun Lubricator. Again, the specific name this whole sense of consumerism and brand consciousness kicks in again so they are americans their culture is way different to the britishers so they are so brand conscious they are into more into consumerism and very practical not really into these supernatural or gothic aspects you take this bottle, I shall leave it here. Take this bottle, I shall leave it here. You can apply it later on. Just apply it, we can't sleep. It's, you're making so much noise. You need to apply well in those chains. So here is this bottle, I'll place it right here. You apply it later on, whenever you want it. And after saying that, Mr. Otis 
calmly quietly went back to his room to rest <laughs> and what was the reaction of the ghost for a moment he was flabbergasted he was shocked what is this what just happened the ghost could not believe it and for a moment he uh, stood there quite motionless uh, what is going on what just happened this man is not scared of me and so with that he fled down he rushed down the corridor uh, groaning in disappointment however as he reached the top of the great oak staircase the door flung wide open and two little white figures appeared and a large pillow whisked past his head so the two twins the stars and the stripes they were in their mischievous cells so what they did was as the ghost came running down they um, threw this pillow right at his head he fled and um, reached a secret chamber in the left wing and he leaned against a moonbeam to recover his breath and began to realize his position his position in the sense that what he has done in the past and how successful he was never in his brilliant and uninterrupted career of 300 years had he been so grossly insulted so here it is here is a ghost who can be insulted who is sensitive who can be annoyed <laughs> i mean i i haven't come across a ghost like this a ghost like Sir Simon, who can be sensitive, who can be insulted. <laughs> so now he is reflecting on his position, what he has done in the past. So never in his brilliant years, 300 years, he had never been this insulted. He thought of the Dowager Duchess, whom he had frightened into a fit as he stood uh in the glass in her face and diamonds and you know the four housemates who had gone into hysterics as soon as the four housemates saw him they shrieked with fear and also um sir william gall old madam of tremoilac who having awakened up one morning early and seen a skeleton seated in an armchair by the fire reading her diary and also Lord Canterville Lord Canterville was also scared he was found choking in his dressing room with the uh, the knave of diamond that is the card choking with the cards which he used to play and he confessed that he had cheated Charles James Fox out of 50,000 all his great achievements came back to him he has been insulted he has been hurt by mr otis and by his family mr otis and his family he has been hurt so all his great achievements came back to him from the butler who had shot himself in the pantry because he had seen a green hand tapping up at the window pane to the beautiful lady Stutfield, who was always obliged to wear a black velvet, he also recalled his last appearance, the last appearance before uh, the Otis family moved in. And the last appearance was as a red ruben or the strangled babe, his last appearance. And he debuted his first appearance, I'm talking about before the Otis family moved in. Alright, his first appearance in the house, 
he debuted as um, Gond Gibeon, the blood sucker of Bexley Moore. Thinking about all this, from his first appearance to the last appearance before the oldest family moved in, he was so successful. For um, 300 years, he had never been this insulted. Why is he so insulted? Uh, he's so insulted because his sole purpose is uh, scaring people living in the house, living in the chase, the Canterville chase. But the present uh, inhabitants, they're not scared of him. And for that reason, he is hurt, he is insulted. It is quite unbearable. Uh, you know, throwing pillow at him and also being offered this rising sun lubricator. He was insulted and it really hurt his feelings. So the ghost is hurt. <laughs> his feelings is hurt. And accordingly, he determined, he was determined, I shall have my vengeance. I will not leave it. So his first appearance in front of the Otis family has been a complete flop. Not just flop. He's insulted. However, he's made of his mind. I will not give up. I shall have my revenge. And with that, we uh, get to the end of chapter 2. We move on to chapter 3. Chapter 3 is um, entitled as Ghostly Strategies. So here we will come to know the presence of the the ghost the presence of the ghost being acknowledged by the Otis family and blood stains in different colors Virginia's reaction to the blood stain second appearance of the ghost as well as the third appearance of the ghost we will be going through uh, this points in detail so now the Otis family has finally acknowledged that there is a ghost. There is another person who is living in the house and he is none other than the ghost. So they've acknowledged that the ghost is in the house. However, they have acknowledged not in a way that they are scared. They have just acknowledged that the ghost is in the house and if the ghost wants to live in the house he also has to maintain some manners or some way of living otherwise it will be difficult so that's what they they're discussing it's not like they're scared the ghost is living here we're scared no nothing like that so mr otis thinks that i have no wish to do the ghost any personal harm personal injury and I must say that considering the length of time he has been in the house I don't think it is at all polite to throw pillows at him so my sons it is not polite to throw pillows at him don't do that at the same time he also has to use Tammany rising sun lubricator <laughs> so he's, he also has to use that well we have to be polite to him since he has been you know living in this house for so long we have to be polite at the same time he also has to do his work the ghost also has to do his work and what is that he also has to apply rising sun lubricator otherwise we shall have to remove the chains <laughs> look at how um, uh, mr. Otis is talking he's talking as if is uh, is as if he's dressing or talking about an actual person that the ghost a, a human if he refuses to use rising sun lubricator we have to remove his chains because we can't sleep we cannot sleep so that's how they have talked about for the rest of the weeks they were undisturbed the only thing that excited any attention 
was this uh, continual renewal of the blood stain on the library floor. In chapter 1, Washington removed the blood stain with Paragon detergent. In chapter 2, also removed, next day it was there, even now the blood stain has appeared again. And what is funny is the blood stains are in different colors, not just the red blood stain. And let's look at the the colors, the different colors. Some morning it was dull red and it was vermilion next morning um, that is red the color of blood vermilion and rich purple and once they came down for family prayers they found the stain in this um, emerald green much to their amusement and they even placed this bet tomorrow what will be the color i think it will be red i think it will be um purple green something so they started to place a bet so it was uh, it was so amusing to them instead of being scared look at uh go back to the reaction of mrs omni you see the blood stain it has been there for a long time it is the blood stain you know so scary as said by mrs omni but look at this uh, practical American family they're not scared instead they're having fun one important thing which we need to keep in mind here is um, Virginia's reaction to the blood stain so the only person who did not enter into the jock was little Virginia who for some unexplained reason was always a good deal distressed at the sight of the blood stain and very nearly cried the morning it was emerald green it is only virginia who did not uh, join the bandwagon of making fun of the ghost um, we are into the second appearance of the ghost so the second appearance of the ghost was on Sunday night. Shortly after they had gone to bed, they were suddenly alarmed by a fearful crash. So there was this loud crash. The sound of like something big has fallen. And rushing down, as they rushed down, they found that a large suit of old armor, basically just a uh, take it as armor had become detached from its stand i'm sure you must be aware of the big houses you know as you know staircase as they go down there will be armors and all this stuff to showcase it so something like that the thing has fallen down the armor has fallen down while seated in a high back chair was the Canterville ghost the armor has fallen down and they also saw Canterville Chase sitting on a high back chair and <laughs> the funny thing is the ghost was rubbing his knees <sighs> so this is the ghost who can feel the pain who can be insulted who can be hurt whose feelings can be hurt so and here the ghost is feeling the pain and he's rubbing his knees <sighs> and what happened the twins having uh, brought their pea shooters with them at once discharged their pellets straight at the ghost as the ghost was writhing in agony feeling pain the two uh, the twins discharged their pea shooters straight at him the ghost and shrieked in you know a wild rage and he swept through them like a mist extinguishing uh, washington otis's candle as he passed 
leaving them in total darkness. He did this because he had been so successful in the past and he was determined to give his celebrated peal of this uh, demonic laughter. This demonic laughter had more than on one occasion found extremely useful and it was said to have turned Lord Raker's wig or the hat in a single night and had certainly made three Lady Canterville's friends governesses giving warning before their month was up. So three governesses, we give up. We don't want to stay here, so in the past. It was so successful, this demonic laughter. He accordingly laughed at his most horrible laugh. So thinking about the past, how successful it was. He gave his best laughter, this demonic laughter. And as he was uh, doing this, Mrs. Otis, uh, the wife of Mr. Otis, came out in a light blue dressing gown and what did she reply she again like her husband she replied i am afraid you are far from well and have brought you a bottle of dr dobel's tincture that is a liquid if it is in digestion you will find it a most excellent remedy here again uh, <laughs> mrs. Otis is also not at all scared and like her husband she just moved out from her room and very calmly addressed the ghost I'm afraid you're not well so uh, I have brought you this Dr. Dobell's liquid again brand Dr. Dobell's specific name You have this if it is because of your indigestion It will be really helpful. We've been we've been using this and it is so helpful So you use this the ghost what else is Can you imagine what his reaction will be? <laughs> the ghost glared at her in fury and began at once to make preparations for turning himself into a large black dog which was an accomplishment in the past however he hesitated on reaching his room he entirely broke down and became a prey to the most violent agitation typical style of the ghost scaring humans that conventional style has shifted or it has interchanged in the sense that the Otis family is not the prey instead he is the prey now P-R-E-Y and he broke down exhausted disappointed insulted annoyed deeply hurt we're talking about the ghost remember we're not talking about a human but a ghost he hoped that the oldest family will be scared of that armor and they will be at the same time thrilled by that armor but it turned out to be the opposite they were not at all scared the armor was too heavy and he was completely overweight overpowered by the weight of the huge breastplate he has been hurt his second appearance he tried to recover himself he tried to encourage himself remember this is a ghost who can be hurt who is really sensitive and he tried he resolved to make a third attempt to frighten the United States minister and his family so first attempt flopped second attempt flopped it did not go accordingly third attempt he has 
again resolved to scare the Otis family and he selected August 17th for his appearance for his third appearance I mean uh, that is on Friday 17th August what was his plan let's look at his plan so his plan of action was this he was to um, make his way quietly to Washington's room and then um, laugh at him from the foot of the bed the bed of Washington and he will step himself three times in the throat to the sound of low music he doesn't like Washington he has this grudges remember this is a ghost who can also have grudges <laughs> who also has you know grudges and he felt this uh, grudges for Washington why because uh, Washington has the habit of removing the blood stain and he did not like it so after that he was to proceed he was to go to um, the state's minister and his wife mr. and mrs. Otis and there he will place his wet hand on mrs. Otis forehead while he hissed at the same time he will hissed into trembling husband's ear so first he will go to uh, Washington's room he will step three times and after that he will go to Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Otis room and what he will do is he will place his wet uh, wet hand on Mrs. Otis forehead and he will hiss into the ear of uh, Mr. Otis what about Virginia? Uh, with regards to Virginia, the ghost had not quite made up his mind yet. He wasn't sure what he will do with the ghost. I mean, with Virginia. So, because why? The reason being, uh, she had never insulted him in any way and was pretty and gentle. So, he, th he thought like maybe a few hollow groans from the wardrobe will be sufficient because Virginia has not troubled him she's also very pretty and gentle I, I, I'll not I will not be harsh on her so maybe a few hollow groans will do that was what he has made up and as for the twins he was quite determined to teach them a lesson I will not leave them. They've hurt me so badly. They've insulted me. Throwing pillows at me. Throwing their pea sugar pellets at me. No. I'll teach them a lesson. I am not going to spare them. So the first thing to be done was, of course, to sit upon their chest so as to produce the stifling sensation of nightmare. So they'll, he will sit on their chest then as their beds were quite close to each other to stand between them in the form of a green icy cold corpse green icy dead body till they become paralyzed with fear and finally to throw off the winding sheet and crawl round the room with white bleached bones and one rolling eyeball in the character of dumb daniel or the suicide skeleton so that was his plan for each character for every one of them he has made up his mind so at half past ten he heard the family going to bed he stepped stealthily out of the wainscoting with an evil smile on his cruel, wrinkled mouth. Ha ha ha! So tonight, third attempt, I am not going to spare any one of them. Ha 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 ha! So that wry smile. Then the clock uh, struck quarter and he felt the time was come. My time has come. And now I have to approach. 
he chuckled to himself and turned the corner. But no sooner had he done so than, with a piteous wail of terror, he fell back and hid his white face in his long bony hands. He was scared, he was frightened. Right in front of him was a horrible specter, motionless. Right in front of him was a horrible specter, motionless as a carven image and monstrous as a madman's dream. So right in front of him was a big figure, a specter, a ghost, another ghost. So he has encountered another ghost in the third appearance. So its head was bold and burnished, its face round and fat and white, and hideous laughter seemed to have writhed its features into an eternal green. So never in his entire life he has seen that ghost. He was scared, he was frightened, and after a second hasty glance at the awful phantom, he fled back to his room. He was scared. He was so frightened. And with that, he fled back to his room. Despite his efforts to scare the Otis family, he is the only one who is scared. And even in his third attempt, he has been duped. He has been tricked by the Otis family. So after some time, uh, Sir Simon remembers that he's a ghost and so therefore not be afraid of other ghosts. He even ponders um, sort of forming an alliance with the ghost which he has seen and you know sort of trying to form an alliance with him and scaring the Otis family together, partner. However, by the time he decides to try this plan, the sun has started to rise, filling the halfway with the uh, with light. The extra illumination helps Sir Simon. So it is uh, almost daybreak, and Sir Simon was able to see the other ghost. And when he saw the other ghost it was actually fake the other ghost was a fake ghost which was set up by the Otis family as kind of a scarecrow you know the scarecrow which we you know we see in like fields and stuff like that it was a scarecrow which was set up by the Otis family they've even put up their own merchandise tag on it and it was uh, Yay Otis Ghost, only through an original spook. Beware of the imitations, all others are counterfeit. <laughs> so, it is interesting because uh, the Otis uh, chose to uh, give this brand name to the ghost which they have set up. Remember again, letting us to reflect on this brand consciousness and this whole idea of consumerism. So truly upset by this, Sir Simon vows that after the rooster had crowed twice that morning, deeds of blood would be wrote and murder walk abroad with silent feet. Uh, Sir Simon has read in ancient books, uh, it is an oath long used by his family. Every time it has been uttered by a Canterville, the rooster has crowed twice and the oath has been fulfilled. Today, however, the rooster only crows once. Instead of enacting deeds of blood, um, Sir Sam retires to a lead coffin for the day again disappointed, frightened, uh, frightened, shocked by the ghost, trying to scare the Otis family. He has been scared by the fake ghost, that is by 
the Otis family. So third attempt again flopped. He has been hurt again and he retired to a comfortable coffin and stayed there till evening. Remember, remember again this ghost is really hurt and his feelings are hurt. <laughs> We come to chapter 4, Schoolboy's Tricks. In chapter 4, the war is on. It's game on. Sir Simon and the twins in particular have, you know, taken up arms to um, hurt each other, to scare each other. The bloodstain is renewed, removed, renewed removed renewed with different colors in chapter 4 we will see that and also one remarkable thing in chapter 4 again is the ghost is weak tired and nerves shattered his nerves are shattered he is weak and tired <laughs> which uh, again makes it really funny because we have never come across a ghost who is weak and who is tired and who can also have feelings. In chapter 4, the next day the ghost was very tired and for 5 days he kept to his room and at last made up his mind to give up the point of the blood stain on the library floor. I'll rather give up this blood stain. I'm tired. I'm weak and there's no point. I ain't I think it's best that I give up and he was disappointed he was tired that the Otis family was not scared of him despite three attempts now they could not be scared on the contrary the person who was scared was none other than him so for the next three Saturdays accordingly he traversed he moved around the corridor uh, usually between midnight and 3 o'clock and <laughs> what is uh, funny here is he moved around during midnight but tiptoeing so as not to make any noise and again which is really funny is he is applying that uh, Tammany rising sun lubricator so as not to make the noise he's like ah I don't want to but you know he's forced to <laughs> and now he's very careful because Traps are also set up, you know, strings from one end to another end. So he has to be very careful about all this. And he has to tiptoe so as not to disturb the Otis family. So, who is scared now? It is actually none other than the ghost. And he has become a prey. A prey to the Otis family. And he will remove his boots and then walk softly so as not to make any noise, wooden boards. And he was also sure, he made sure to apply the uh, Rising Sun lubricator for oiling the chains. I am bound to acknowledge that it was with a good deal of difficulty that he brought himself to, ad to adopt this mode of protection. This is the words of the author. So. <laughs> The ghost was egoistic, he is very proud of what he has accomplished more than 300 years. But now he is weak, he is tired, he, you know, trying to scare the oldest family, it is not helping. So for now he, with great effort and difficulty, he had brought himself to adopt this idea of applying rising sun lubricator so as not to scare the Otis family and he also um, slipped into Mrs. Otis room and stole that bottle again and he also found out that strings were continually stretched across the corridor over which uh, you know sometimes he would trip in the dark and on one occasion while dressed for the part of Black Isaac or the Huntsman of Hogley Woods, he met with a severe fall through trading on a butter slide. 
which the twins had constructed from the entrance of the tapestry chamber to the top of the staircase. One night he felt and tripped and he slid down the staircase sliding down. He was able to slide because the Otis twins had you know placed uh, butter there so that you know it'll be slippery and the ghost will have some difficulty. And that was so much for him. This lost insult you know enraged him so much that he resolved to make one last final effort you know to assert his dignity as well as as well as his position you know <clears throat> I'm so hurt I have to restore my dignity and my social position so here is the ghost who wants to <laughs> restore his dignity as well as his social position and he determined he was determined to you know do it one last time so his fourth appearance this will be his fourth appearance um, he has been triggered you know for one final appearance fourth appearance remember chapter 4 so being heard by the Otis twins he has resolved to make one last appearance Sir Simon you know thought about thought long and hard about how he should appear or how he shall appear so ultimately he decided on uh, reckless Rupert you check out your textbook I'm using um, orient black swan textbooks so he decided on a uh, reckless Rupert or the headless Earl uh, which was really successful in the past the costume was quite elaborate and it's been uh, so long since he has lost used it and he had to search all over the house to assemble it finally however he was able to gather all the you know equipment or the costumes one thing to make a, a dramatic or effective entrance he flinged the door wide open but um, a heavy jug of water fell right down on him wetting him to the skin and just missing his soldier by a couple of inches so wishing to make an effective entrance he flung the door wide open but as soon as he flung the door wide open a heavy jug of water fell all over his body it was so shocking the shock to his nervous system was so great that he fled back to his room as hard as he could go and the next day he was laid up with a severe cold it was so humiliating it was so shocking that he fled back to his room and the next day you know he got cold remember this is a ghost who can also get cold infection <laughs> so with that he has given up all hopes he's shattered completely shattered he now gave up all hope of ever frightening this rude American family so now he considered this family as rude this family is so rude not scared of me and they're trying to hurt me one night um, while Sir Simon was walking you know around the halls thinking about all the accomplishments um, the twins and Washington attempted to trap Sir Simon he resorted to fleeing through the flues of Canterville's chase wood stuff and he arrived back at his dirty room in a state of despair so he has given up all hope of frightening the Otis family it was so evident that 
his appearance, it was quite evident that his feelings were so wounded, so hurt that he would not appear again. So he was so hurt that he, you know, he made up his mind not to um, appear in front of the Otis family again. It was generally assumed that the ghost had gone away and so now no more appearance of the ghost and in fact Mr. Otis wrote a letter to Lord Canterville that the ghost was no longer in the house to Lord Canterville and Lord Canterville reply uh, you know expressing his great pleasure at the news and send his congratulations to the minister's wife. Uh, again, in the last part of this chapter, we are introduced to one character, the Duke of Cheshire. And the ghost came to know that there was a young person by the name of uh, the uh, you know, Duke of Cheshire. The ghost thought about uh, making one more attempt, but thinking about the twins and the Otis family, he thought you know, no, I will not go in front of them again. He thought about going for another attempt. However, uh, his terror of the twins prevented him leaving his room. And, uh, you know, the little duke slept in peace under the great feathered canopy in the royal bedchamber and the duke dreamed of virginia again kind of a little fairy tale romance is brought to light here so this is uh this is it i will cover chapter uh five six seven in part three